This podcast is brought to you in part by PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their two retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. All right, everybody, uh, and welcome to the Nintendo Pulse podcast. This is episode number 57, recording on Thursday, August 15th, 2013. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison, and joining me, and wondering why I'm laughing, Stephen Munn. Stephen, how the hell are you? I'm all right. I, I assumed it was because you were a little bit tongue-tied before. Yeah, like uh, I started started the intro and I was like, "You're this episode of the pl- 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 um, <laughs> so that obviously wasn't anything." And then I start start it do it perfectly, and then I go to talk and my mic's still muted. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm like I don't know I'm I'm not firing on all cylinders today. I'm fighting a stomach bug. So um, if if I say weird things, uh, I mean weirder than normal because I usually say things that are a little weird. Um, just please, please excuse me, Stephen. I, I, I seek your your uh, forgiveness before it even happens because I know oh, it's going to happen. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll try to tease you slightly less than usual. All right, all right. That's good. That's good. All right, man. Well, how the hell are you? It's been uh, it's been a week's time since we last talked. Um, how are things been? I'm I'm doing really well. You know, in the world of gaming, I'm doing fantastic. I'm uh, I've spent so much time gaming this past week, playing some really really good games. Pikmin three. Um, some more Animal Crossing. I finished up some of the stuff in that. Um, wow! Just doing great. I got. Uh, I, I saw some today, stuff like Nino Kuni. I, I, I will. We'll get into Nino Kuni in a second. But I saw today you posted two big uh, screenshots in Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. You, you completed your fossils and you got uh, all of your emotes from Skrunk or whatever his name is. Shrunk. Shrunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty good. You don't have to talk to those jerks anymore. Yeah, I realized after I tweeted the first one about blathers that I still need to talk to him for other things like uh, insects and also and if fish. You, <laughs> if you want to get real money for your fossils that you dig up, because I, if you if you sell a um, an unidentified um, fossil, I think you only get two thousand bells. But if you identify it, then you get like the full like twenty five hundred to fifty five hundred, depending on what the fossil oh, wow. is. So it's definitely worth um, still having them identify your your uh, fossils. Yeah, that's that too. But uh, yeah, it, um, I, I'm six emotes left to get because I keep forgetting to do it. And then I mm-hmm. realize when it's after Club LOL is already opened, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. I can't go talk to him and do it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll wait till the next day. And then I end up forgetting the next day and the next day. And then I remember. Yeah. Fun, fun stuff. Yeah. So you need to send me your list of fossils that you still need so that I can start watching for ones for you. I've been doing that for a lot of my friends on Twitter. Sure. No, I, f- I finished mine about... Uh, almost a month ago like i finished oh, it so okay. early um i finished it when i only still had one painting in my um in in my uh, museum which wow is, which is weird I, I just happened that every time like three or two of the fossils that i dig up would be ones that he didn't already have um for the first like week or two it was every single one so wow. yeah i got i got really lucky i don't know maybe um maybe it was because i put a four-leaf clover in the bottom left hand corner of my uh, main floor uh, which gave me some extra luck. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess that could have been it. <clears throat> could have been. I always forget to take that stuff into account. Um, the other day I dug up four fossils and three of them were saber tooth torsos. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Are you uh, going to make a Marvel themed um, um, thing in your museum? You could just put all the things that sound like Marvel characters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching for a bit there, Lloyd. All right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I yeah. guess I could do that. I'll get the Wolverine fossil next. <laughs> and the Cyclops. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. The one eyed something or other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh besides uh that stuff, um what's what's new with you? Uh not a whole lot. Just, mm-hmm. you know, um uh, getting ready for a couple of weeks off from work. Nice. Uh, I have a short day tomorrow. Nice. Did some uh, some work on some design work on the side uh, for some freelance stuff that I did tonight. That was fun. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you were a designer. Yeah, I used to do. Um, I used to work as a graphic designer for Kinkos. Oh, okay. Um, they're not Kinkos anymore. I think they're just called FedEx Office now. But uh, <clears throat> right. 
Uh, I did that for a few years, and then I did I did freelance design work at the same time, and I've been doing some freelance work, subcontractor freelance work on and off for about 15 years with this one woman who doesn't live too far from me hmm. um, and is a friend of mine, good friend of mine. So oh, she good. gets all this work and she, you know, about once a year she hands a bunch of it to me <clears> because <throat> it's too much for her to handle. So I do the rest of it. Oh, that's awesome. That's always a nice, nice extra source of income, which is good. Yep. A little bit of supplemental income and she's a cool person. So it's nice to help her out. The sweet. Awesome. Well, what do you say we get into the show? Let's do it. All right. Well, thanks everybody that's been um, following my directions and subscribing on YouTube. Um, I think we're still a couple people shy um, from enabling YouTube Live, but uh, we're a heck of a lot um, closer to the goal than we were when we uh, started begging for people to subscribe. So if you haven't already, um, head on over to vgpodcast.com. Uh, and in the sidebar, there's a nice little widget where you can subscribe to YouTube right from there. Um, but if you want to see what our actual YouTube channel is, go to youtube.com slash VGPod. It has every single podcast that we've recorded video on. So it's something like, a, I think it's like 180 episodes. I, I'm wow. going to go into my channel, my video manager and just verify that. Is it 100? No, sorry, 130. Um, I guess it kind of looks like an eat. Um, but yeah, 130 episodes across all the different shows on the network. Um, and they're all there. So if you want to watch what we had to say about Pikmin, you can go and look at uh, Nintendo Pulse episode number 56, um, where we first started talking about Pikmin, or this episode <laughs> where we're going to talk more about Pikmin. Um, and you can actually watch the video and um, feel like you're here in the chat room watching us while we record the show. So do check it out. Watch the uh, videos. Um, you can even watch them on your like Roku or your PlayStation or your Xbox or Apple TV, whatever you have in your living room. Your uh, Wii U. Your Wii U actually um, works really well. Um, you can do that as well. So uh, do check it out and uh, let us know what you think over at uh, youtube.com slash VGPod. Um, hopefully going to be working on some some stuff. Um, that will be um, exclusive for the YouTube channel. Um, so people can uh, that subscribe will get some extra video stuff is in the future. But um, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes um, as we work on it. Uh, but yeah, go check it out. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it for announcements. Let's get into the show. Steven, sure. uh, what have you been playing besides Pikmin 3? We'll save that for the end and we'll both we'll talk about it. Uh, unsurprisingly, Animal Crossing <clears throat> New Leaf. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I think we already covered that. Um, and uh, the demo for Wonderful 101. Uh, I downloaded that after the uh, announcement came out after the Wonderful 101 Direct, which was hilarious. Right. Um, yeah. How awesome was that Direct, actually? It was the, really, really great. A lot of the Direct and the really deep bows and stuff. And it was just like, wow, that was... That was really well done. <laughs> it was, and and the the date that well we'll we'll talk about it later. Sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, and also, I I tried out the um, Mario and Luigi demo, um, which okay. was a little disappointing, more oh. than a little disappointing. Oh really? Um, I guess we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll, let's see it. Um, cool. Um, they they compressed. They apparently compressed the um, the audio, the music in it, pretty severely. Oh, in the demo. In the demo, yeah. But the full version, I guess, the music is fine. But I didn't know that when I was playing it. I was like, wow, this sounds awful. Because it was like screaming out of the speakers and it sounded all distorted. And, you know, I had to play it at like half volume. But yeah, <laughs> uh, people are telling me that the audio in the actual game is better. And uh, I also just kind of underwhelming visually. <clears throat> yeah, I, I bought the game. I bought it on release day. And I'm about two, two and a half hours in and I'm, I'm finding myself find other things to do than rather than play it, which is never a good thing. Because once yeah. I get distracted on a game, I, I play so much, it's hard for me to go back and play it. Um, I'm finding that the sprites are really underwhelming. Um, yeah. And yeah, just the the style. Um, it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like a Nintendo polished title for some reason. So I can sure. I can see where you're coming coming from from that. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to pick it up. Hmm. At least not, at least not at full price. Right. Wait first. Oh, actually, Nintendo stuff never goes on sale. So, does on gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It just. Uh, I like how everybody always says that they're waiting for Nintendo titles to go on sale. It's like, oh yeah, how's that um, um, that Mario Kart for uh, the Nintendo DS? Uh, did you did you find that one on sale yet? <laughs> I mean, it's like eight years. You should have been able to get it on sale. Oh wait, it's still fifty dollars in stores. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. It's wow, so funny. Bummer. 
Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Well, um, I've been playing Animal Crossing, of course. Um, playing less and less um, because I've been doing some other things on my 3DS. Um, been playing, uh, um, of course, Mario and Luigi. We already talked about that. Um, not really enjoying it so much right now. So it's kind of disappointing. Um, very disappointing, actually. And uh, I picked up DuckTales Remastered. Um, it's not out on the Wii U right now, but I figure since it's coming out, uh, I might as well start talking about it here. Um, I downloaded it on my PlayStation 3 uh, because if you have a PlayStation Plus membership, you could get the game for 20% off. Uh, I don't know if you still can, but I know you could because it's part of their uh, play um, promotion that they're having where they have four games for summer, and it was one of them. So I picked it up, <clears throat> got it for 12 bucks instead of 15 and... Um, what else can I say about it? It's it's the original game with new graphics, new sound, a story, voiceovers. Voiceovers are weird, though, because the lips don't move. So the characters just kind of wiggle a little bit. It's it's kind of odd. They went so far yeah. to like hand, hand draw all this animation and they didn't animate the mouth moving. But I guess then you don't have to worry about different animations for different parts of the world. Maybe that was what they're going for. Um, but the game itself is just it, it's awesome looking. It's it's like packed to the brim with nostalgia. Um, I played through it. I played it on easy uh, and not because I suck at video games, but um, easy mode um, doesn't have the old Nintendo um, punishing difficulty of if you die in a game in the game uh, and you lose all your lives or hearts or whatever, uh, you have to restart the whole level from scratch. Uh, in this game, you would just die and you just reappear and you keep going. So I was basically using it as a way to beat the game without being crazy punished um, because it is hard. It is a hard game in some areas. Um, I'm going to go back and play it on some of the other difficulties. But um, I sat through uh, and I played it with my kids and uh, basically a marathon it and they loved every second of it. They now want me to go find all the DVD sets for the DuckTales cartoon because I talked to them about how the game is based on a cartoon and the intro music is the same as the cartoon and they got all the people that did the voices in the cartoon to this and they're like, wow, that's awesome. That's like when I played Andre the Giant in WWE Wrestling All-Stars. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's kind of like that, but way different but uh it was <laughs> no kind of... child it's nothing like that <laughs> go back to your room <laughs> it's really funny how they pick things up like that but um sure. the, they loved it um my son tried playing it it was a little bit hard for him uh the controls are a little bit weird um but they're very um similar to what the nintendo version was like so they're they're no weirder than they already were where if you're too close to a block coming down um and you're on your pogo stick you just stop pogo sticking even if you're not far enough over to land on the block um, so that will lead to some deaths and things like that but once you figure that out the controls are great um, it's just it's awesome the like even the um, the end movie when when the credits are scrolling it has this like really great acoustic version of some of the music and it just like from start to bottom uh, the game is just a love letter to old like early Nintendo platformers and all the nostalgia that I have for that 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 era basically of gaming um, it's everything about that just nicely packaged up with a with a tidy bow um, I, I'm seeing some really harsh reviews on it um, and I don't yeah. really understand where they're coming from uh, because I'm not 20 I'm 37 and I played this when it originally came out so I'm, yeah. I'm trying to see it from the viewpoint of someone that maybe never played it when it originally came out and that was what gaming was um, so I can see how some of this would be maybe sort of um, not fun for them I guess but for me someone that played the original and loves that style of game it's just it, it's probably one of my one of my favorite titles um, that I've played in the last little while um, it's not going to win game of year or anything but um, I will buy any other remastered version that they do. If they do Chippendales, if they do Tailspin, if they do anything, uh, I, I will buy it um, because they did such a good job with DuckTales. Um, yeah. So if you have any sort of like any interest at all, uh, if you have played the original and you like that style of game, mm -hmm. uh, definitely pick this one up. You might want to play through on easy if you don't want to get frustrated and rage quit. But um, it's <laughs> uh, it's great. Um you can actually um, you can beat the game to unlock the 8-bit um, music, which is really cool. Or you can actually enter the old Capcom code, which is like up, down, left, right, um, BA or whatever. Um, 
that they had in some of the Street Fighter games and stuff like that. Uh, you do it actually when the old style Capcom logo comes up and then it un- actually unlocks the 8-bit music right from the start if you want to play through it that way. So what a great title. Um, I loved every part of it, um, even though I didn't get all the trophies. <laughs> I, uh, I I loved it and I will uh, replay them multiple times. So yeah, check it out. DuckTales Remastered. It's on the Wii U. I think, I guess it is now. I because they come Nintendo's digital stuff is usually on a Thursday, right? Is that when their normal day I is? I think so. I think it's a Thursday. So yeah, I guess it I guess it is on the Wii U right now. Um so you can download it and check it out and uh see if that's something you like. Um yeah, check it out. DuckTales Remastered. Really, really fun game. Cool. All right. So that's it for that. Um um Jay Cargooth's asking in the chat room, is it coming to 3DS? I don't believe so. It's on Xbox, uh, PlayStation 3, and Wii U. Although Xbox, um, their release date isn't until like September 10th or something. So it's like a month away from everything else. And I think yeah. it's coming to PC as well, but I, I'm not positive yep. on that. Is it it's out already? It's going to come to Steam. It's going to be coming to oh, Steam. Oh, I don't, I don't know if it's, out, if it's out on there yet. Yeah, so go go check it out if you're looking for it. Um, I, I picked it up on a PlayStation, even though it feels like a game that I should be playing on a Nintendo console. Um, mm-hmm. So... If it's ever on sale on the Wii U, I might pick it up just to have it and play it on the gamepad because that would be pretty cool. Yeah, now I heard that there's um, that there's no Wii Remote support in the Wii U version. You can't play it with the Wii Remote turned sideways, which seems like a massive oversight to me. That does seem really weird. I didn't I didn't hear about that. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, that's what people played it on the cross um, like D pad and the mm-hmm. two buttons right side by side. Huh. Yeah. That would be like the perfect way to play it, I think. That would be. That's really bizarre. I didn't I didn't hear about that. Um yeah. hmm. I might might have to rethink about picking up on the Wii U then if it's ever on sale. Because I just assumed I'd be able to do that and it would feel actually what I'll just do is buy the cartridge and play it on my Retron five when it finally comes out. And there then you go. I don't have to worry about it. That's what I'll do. Oh speaking <laughs> of which apparently there's a boxed version coming for the PS3, but it's not on a disc. It's a download code in a box. <laughs> that's funny you know, <laughs> what these guys actually did is they pressed a new version of this game uh the nes version um in a gold cartridge and it's limited to like a hundred or a thousand or something super low limited um low number limited uh, release that they sent out to reviewers so all yeah. the reviewers that got the the swag kit got like t-shirt and all that stuff that you normally get i guess when you're a big time game reviewer i don't get any of that stuff so i don't know what it is but <laughs> I, i'm sure uh I'm sure there's people out there that can talk about that. But yeah, you get a they got a tin um, that looks like a lunchbox and inside was a gold cartridge, which is pretty cool. So that yeah. is cool. I saw some pictures of it on IGN. <clears throat> looks really neat. Looks really neat. It, it's definitely if if they can handle um, other old classic uh, platformers with the same love and care that they did with this one, um, I they can keep making this for the rest of rest of time and I'd be okay. Like the style yeah. of game, it's it's so much fun. Um, they they really really did a good job. So big props to Way Forward. They uh, definitely hit it out of the park for this one. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into our review of Pikmin Three because both Stephen and myself have fully beat the game. Uh, and I don't know, Stephen, if you had to give a say uh, on a scale of one to ten, mm-hmm. what's your initial like number review? Uh, we don't do review scores on this, but I'm just kind of I want to kind of place what your love affair with this one is. On a scale of one to ten, what would you? Um, I don't want to over. I don't want to, you know, score it too high. But I, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. No, I mean, you know what I mean, this there is no harm in it. You know, yeah. I could say, I, I could say, oh, it's a ten out of ten. It's an eleven. And, it's yes, my favorite thing this ever. One, this one goes to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I would say like maybe a nine or a nine and a half. Oh, the, really? The game is wow. Was really really. I thought it was really really good. Okay. I was very happy with the length of it, and um, the only <laughs> thing that I thought was pretty underwhelming was the um, the 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 mini game stuff, you know, like the treasure hunt, fight monsters, those ones, and the fact that um, they had the they had the poison and purple Pikmin in those side stages but they didn't use them at all in the main quest right which makes me go you know well why didn't they use them in the main quest you know that but then i guess they would have needed you know more stages and it would have taken even more time to develop but hey maybe dlc with those other pick yeah for sure for sure 
Cool. So, wow, nine and a half. Um, I'm I'm probably about a seven and a half or eight um, on the game. Um, I liked it. I really, really liked it. Um, the last stage, um, the the lead to the boss battle. The boss battle was great. I loved the boss battle. But the kind of thing that you have to go through, I'm not going to spoil it here, but you're basically going through a maze while being hunted. And if you make one wrong move or do something stupid, you're basically like you're pooched and you have to you lose a bunch of your Pikmin. You have to either restart or or figure a way to, to get things back to on track to, to finish it. Uh, that level can go die in a fire. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. The boss battle. I love the boss battle. I would I gladly of if if the game if the last level was me getting out of my ship, collecting my Pikmin, going down into the Coliseum area where the boss battle was and just having the boss battle, I would have said the game is perfect. <laughs> like, <laughs> but but the aggravation that I went through, like the so so much unfun um, was was to be had in in that hour of trying to get through or whatever, however long it took me. It just kind of it tarnished a lot of the joy that I had while I was playing the rest of the stages, which from top to bottom were fun to play. Um, even if you like if, if you send your Pikmin to go carry a fruit home and then you hear, oh, no, Pikmin are being hurt somewhere and you run and find out what actually hurt them. I just go, oh, you guys jumping out of the ground, Mr. Walking Leaf guy, I'll get you next time. <laughs> like nothing made me angry in the yeah. whole game. Doesn't matter what happened. Um, and then the last level was just like, oh, my God, like, why? Why do you hate me? Why do you hate hate us, Nintendo? Um, mm -hmm. But then, as I said, the boss battle kind of made up for some of that. So, so yeah, I, I really did like the game. Um, I didn't play any of the multiplayer, though. Have, have you jumped into any of the multiplayer? Uh, no, all those little side mission ones, those yeah. uh, sub game things I've played by myself. I don't have anyone else here to play them with, and there's no online play. So Yeah, see, I haven't done any of that. I was going to try to do it with my kids, but I just... I, I don't think that they like because my son tried to play Pikmin and he he was just having fun, like just growing Pikmin. Um, so he'd go and find stuff like find pills on a on a thing and then shoot them at the, the at the plant and they would pick the pill and go back and pop out Pikmin and he'd pluck them and then he'd go find more pills. And that was that was how he made fun in Pikmin. So having any sort of major death match <laughs> with him would be wouldn't wouldn't have been su super satisfying so yeah. um, so he's just been playing some of the levels over and, and having fun with that but um really like the game um i i like the fact that there's no pressure put on you to complete x number of things in each day because you know that you only have a set number of time or set amount of 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 days or time to get through this game um the mechanic they put in where you're finding fruits um, and then you you use one bottle of fruit every day and um, the different fruit that you find gives you either 25% um, of a bottle to 50% to a whole bottle to multiple bottles. Um, at the end, I think I had like 65 extra bottles or something and, and I wasn't doing it quickly or anything like that. Um, it was... It was great because uh, yeah. e even though they're at the start, you're like, oh, crap, I got to get more fruit. I got to get more fruit. Um, that kind of threw a little bit of um, attention into the, the starting of the game where you should have tension because you're looking for the other two members of your party. Um, you're trying to, to find out if they're still alive or whatever. Um, so that tension made sense. And then partway through sure. the game, there's more tension, which made sense and was awesome at the same time. Um, it was <laughs> that was something that could have been so incredibly frustrating, yeah. but was so funny yeah. that I that I couldn't be upset about it. No, it was it was great. It was great. Um, but I love that because, uh, as I said last week, um, I played the hell out of Pikmin one um, and loved it. Um, didn't like the kind of time constraint that you were dealing with. Like you, yeah, it, that was tough. It felt like um, Majora's Mask, where the game was awesome, but you always have that that clock that's always counting down, and you and you know that if you screw something up, you're either gonna have to reload your save or 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 lose a bunch of your progress. Um, Pikmin One was kind of like that. Like you know that I have to do X number of things, or I could screw up and then not actually be able to beat this game. Um, Pikmin 2, obviously, from talking to you and other people, even though I only played a few minutes of it, um, it was more like Pikmin 3 than it was like Pikmin 1. So yeah. I, I want to maybe go try to find a used copy of the um, new play control Pikmin 2 and, and play through that so I could say that I played it. Yeah, you may be out of luck on that. I don't know if you've heard, but that's one of those games that went out of print really quickly and oh, is really? now commanding ridiculous prices. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, Okay, well, maybe not. Um, so, good I'll, luck. I'll, I'll keep my <laughs> eyes out. You never know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so so Pikmin Pikmin is great. Um, I I just don't understand why it took like seventy three years for uh, this game to actually come out, <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm glad it did. And I will be uh, I'll, I'll be happy to play any other Pikmin game that comes out. And I'll actually will not mind seeing any Pikmin stuff in Super Smash Brothers because it won't make me get angry for the fact that there hasn't been a sequel um, and they're putting it in other stuff. Sure. Um, but yeah, so um, I don't know any anything else to add to uh, Pikmin 3 that we didn't cover last week. I think they did a great job with the uh, with the uh, mm-hmm. gamepad stuff. Oh, yeah. The go here function on that. Yeah was so useful. I was using it all the time. And um, there were some of the reviews for Pikmin 3, like the one by Chris Kohler over at Wired, who he seems to hate everything lately. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he was like, oh, you know, this game, he tweeted after he wrote his review and he linked to it and he says, yeah, this game makes a great argument for Nintendo's controller, you know, the Wii Remote. And um, <laughs> he said he found it very clumsy to use the, you know, to try and use the uh, the gamepad, and he seemed to be annoyed at the fact that he had to use a Wii remote mm. and stuff like that. Well, I don't really understand. I mean, I think that's that's where Nintendo really shines, is they give you options. Like, if, since the Wii, they've given you multiple ways to play pretty much every game. You can play with the Wiimote, Wiimote Nunchuck, with the classic controller. Um, mm. Now with the Wii U, you can play with the gamepad, with the Pro Controller, with the Wiimote, Wiimote Nunchuck. Not every game obviously supports that, but they give you yeah. options. Um, I found playing with the gamepad was a little bit clunky, um, so I switched over to Wiimote and Nunchuck and never looked back, but I didn't see that as a detriment. I was just happy that I had like kind of the second screen to kind of do my map um, and other stuff. Um, yep. And then I went back and tried to replay some of the levels with just the gamepad, and it, it's a little clunky. I mean, it, it's not precision because you're not actually like laser pointering something at your screen, like go here. You're using yeah. an on-screen like, cursor essentially and on-screen cursors are never that great um but it wasn't horrible um it was definitely playable um but i would if i had the option to do wiimote i obviously wouldn't be playing it on the gamepad because the wiimote was such a better control method for this game oh yeah yeah it it worked great and the combination (laughs) i mean like i have my uh i don't know if you can see it back there behind me but i have uh my gamepad on on the cradle it's got the u-boost hooked onto the back of it so i have the extra battery power nice and um, I just had it sitting there, you know, I had my stylus sitting on the coffee table next to it. I had my, my Legend of Zelda gold Wii remote and gold nunchuck in my hands playing Pikmin <laughs> 3. And I would like touch the screen when I needed to pause and then I'd go through and say, okay, go here. Yeah. Look at what fruit I've picked up. Look at the different Pikmin. Okay, here's a bunch of, here's a big enemy I just killed and I'm going to bring it back to the onion. <laughs> now, this is how I pick what color Pikmin are going to bring it back. You know, which Pikmin do I have the least of? Right. And, you know, it was just very useful. I mean, by the time I got to the end of the game, I was switching back and forth all the time and it wasn't clumsy at all. It yeah. was very, very, very good. <clears throat> no, it was great. I, I had kind of the same setup as you, except um, my setup was reclining in my recliner with my gamepad up on my knees, basically, um, and mm-hmm. just propped in such an area where I could see it just below the screen. So it was just like, I, I feel like I'm in some sort of like space capsule or something because i have this screen i have the bigger screen and it it was awesome um as as nerdy as that sounds it was it was pretty awesome to play it that way and then just like reach over touch it go here go here whatever and then go and continue playing the game it was it was great it was a it was a great game from start to finish um i think it took me about 10 hours or so to beat so i don't know where people were saying that it was a short game um I, I even after beating it, I went back and got all the fruit after. So I, I scraped another couple hours out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got all the fruit first and it lasted me between 14 and 15 hours total. Yeah. So so there you go. I was probably really close to that um, all after all said and done. Yeah. So I don't I don't know what these people were smoking, saying it was it was a six hour game. It's like, well, I guess it could be a six hour game if you just did the bare minimum, like go here, do this, go here, do that, go to sleep next day i gotta do this gotta do that gotta do this um if you play it that way well obviously you're gonna have a short time um that should be saved for when you're doing speed running after beating the game the first time maybe um but yeah no i i was quite happy with everything um i'm, I'm really glad i played it um it's a game that i didn't actually buy um i borrowed and i might actually have to pick up a copy um because my kids really liked it and i think as as 
my son gets a little bit better um, controlling things in 3D space. Um, that isn't Mario. Um, I, I think this is a game that he could actually start playing and, and really enjoying. Um, but yeah, the the Wiimote was just giving him all sorts of grief. So I think he'd be he'd be a gamepad guy because uh, it's a little bit a little bit easier for him having not grown up with the Wii because um, he played very few Wii games and the ones that he did he was playing um, with the Wiimote turned sideways using it as an NES controller. So. But yeah, it's um, a great game. Um, get, gets a huge, huge thumbs up from us. So oh, yeah. um, if, if you guys... game on the platform. Yeah, totally. It's I, I don't think it's worth um, buying a system for, but it's really close to that. I mean, if you're on the fence and thinking about all the games that are coming out, there's Zelda, Mario, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, um, all the other third-party stuff that may or may not be announced or actually come out even if it is announced. Um, it... it <laughs> If that stuff, if you're going to be picking that up anyway, and you have the slightest interest in playing Pikmin, um, pick up a system um, or wait for a price drop, which probably will never happen, as we'll get in, get to when we get to the news. But um, it's it's almost a, a system seller, not quite, um, but it's one of those things that I see a lot of people buying a Wii U for, like I don't know, Wind Waker HD remake, and then picking up Pikmin at the same time because they wanted to play it when it first came out. Um, I see it as yeah. a, as a key title on on the system, and um, yeah, good good for Nintendo to actually finally get this one out and save it until it was done because it seemed like a a perfect perfect title from start to finish, except for that stupid last level, which was really <laughs> die. Level, I didn't die. mind it so much. I, I thought <clears throat> that it was, um, you know, undoubtedly it was the I, I, undoubtedly I would call it the weakest part of the. Uh, of the game it just but, wasn't fun in a game filled with joy and mm, and awesomeness it was just it was very stressful yeah it took you out of that situation um and yeah. that feeling which is kind of annoying but uh but there yeah, was something good. similar in pikmin 2 in the in the underground dungeons the randomly generated dungeons when you went in them time stopped and you could effectively as a result spend as much time in the dungeons as you wanted mm-hmm. but if you spent too much time on the on a particular level of the dungeon and didn't go down a level, this monster would show up and just drop okay. in <laughs> and start tearing around the the area and y- you couldn't hurt it, as at least as far as I could tell, you couldn't hurt it. So it was basically this invincible monster would show up to hustle you along to the next level. Mm. And That's outside of that, there was zero stress in Pikmin 2 because there's no time limit. You don't have to pick up fruit to get juice. There's no time limit. You're just picking up treasure. You're going through and picking up treasure. Um, and it's all pretty much discarded garbage, you know, like batteries, old batteries and things like that. Right. So huh. um, Pikmin 2 is like even less stressful than <clears throat> Pikmin 3, hmm. except for that one uh, aspect. And when that thing would show up, it was called, uh, it was called a Water Wraith. When the Water Wraith would show up... Um, it would just be like, I would freak out. <laughs> I'd be like, oh no, get the pigment together, get out of here, time to change levels. I know we didn't get all the treasure, but it's time to get out of here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It would come around a corner and just be like, rumble, rumble. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> wow. I, Charge. That's, away. I, I, I kind of wish I played that now. Damn it. It's great. It's wow. a great game. If you can find a copy of it. <clears throat> definitely play it cool i will look into it awesome well let that's uh pikmin 3 um our our rating is buy so go buy yeah and if you're like a real like really serious consider yourself a serious pikmin fan um i think it is a system seller if mm-hmm. you're if you're a fan of the pikmin series right like if you are the way i am anyway mm-hmm. yeah it, it was well done like i said from start to finish really really good yeah all right, well, let's um, let's move into our email um, section. Uh, we actually got a um, an email. I'm going to pull up his name right now because I didn't put it in the show notes for some strange reason. Yes, you did. Um, well, kind of, but not fully. Um, so the email starts off. And it's like, hi, it's Reggie from Nintendo. Um, just kidding. My name is Reggie and I play a lot of Nintendo. Hello, Lloyd and Steven. I just discovered the podcast not too long ago and I've been really loving the show in addition to the bonus stage. I'm a huge fan of Nintendo games and I've been loving my 3DS XL and every bit of content that I've been able to buy for it, especially Animal Crossing. My question uh, to you guys is, uh, do you think a YouTube ap- application would be um, well suited for the 3DS? Uh, the Wii had one, uh, but I didn't care much for uh, using the Wii remote um, for typing controls. I think it could do very well on the 3DS and would even make it more attractive as a handheld device. 
I also thought that this would be um, or this could be excellent if you wanted to watch an, a Let's Play of a specific game that you're playing right on your 3DS so you could get help if you're stuck without going to another device. The unfortunate thing about the 3DS, though, is that you can only have one app open at a time, so you can't easily flip between YouTube and your game. You have to close one and open the other. Um, however, like Netflix, this would make a wonderful addition to the 3DS that every, uh, literally everyone would use. If this does happen, then we could even watch this podcast on the 3DS as well, which would be pretty cool. Uh, one more small question about the Wii U. Do you guys use Netflix on it at all? I'm still waiting to buy Wii U, namely for the price. Uh, but does it have a gamepad only mode and does it work really well, in your opinion? Uh, thanks again, guys, for having such a great show. And that was from Reggie Gigas, I believe is his last name. Um, thanks, Reggie, for sending in your question. Um, YouTube on the 3DS, I, I'm not a big fan of watching video on the 3DS. I, I've tried the, there's like that Netflix app. Um, there's the Nintendo video. There's other video content and for me the screen is just too small um but i can see where people would really use it um there's a lot of people that all they do ever is watch youtube they get all their music videos and all their video content and that is what they do um and that would make sense to do it on the 3ds i'm kind of surprised there already isn't an app um or maybe the website works through it um because it's uh, html5 um, browser so maybe you can just go directly from the browser and do it that way i don't know steven have you tried that I haven't tried that, no. And I agree with you that I think the screen is just too small. Yeah. It would be neat if um, there was up more 3D content up online and you could do it that way. Um, that would be kind of the, the, I don't know, the quirky fun would kind of get over the size limitations, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so many jokes, but I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, and your question about the Wii U on uh, Netflix on the Wii U. Um, I hadn't tried it uh, because I, I have Apple TVs on every single device in my house and I watch Netflix on those or my iPad. Um, but I downloaded Netflix um, or ran Netflix. I guess it was already downloaded and fired it up. And sure enough, there's a little button on the gamepad that actually transfers the video from your television right to the gamepad. So um, I could see this as being something really awesome if we're watching a movie on on the tv and kids want to watch something else um, they could just do it right on the gamepad <clears throat> to them the size wouldn't really matter because they watch a lot of video right on the ipad and that's that's good to them so um pretty cool i, I didn't know it existed so thanks for sending the question in reggie so i actually went in and um i seeked out the answer for you and uh turns out that it is a pretty good experience um the video looks pretty crisp um as kind of dark and unsaturated that the actual screen on the gamepad is uh, the video quality is actually pretty decent so i didn't mind it too much all right reggie from nintendo or reggie who loves nintendo uh, thanks for sending in your question if you guys want to get your question uh, answered on the show send us an email vgpodcasts at gmail.com or just go to our website and click contact us and send it in and we can read it out or respond to it on a future episode of the show <clears throat> All right, Stephen. Let's get into this. Uh, notable releases for this week. We've got some good stuff. Uh, do you do you want to do you want to take over? I usually do this. Sure. How about, how about I give you the, the the go on it? Yeah, let's do this. All right. Um, Ducktales Remastered, as we said, is apparently out on Wii U. Mm -hmm. um, we had a Nintendo Direct focused entirely on the Wonderful One Hundred and One last Friday, and shortly after, Nintendo announced that there was a demo for Wonderful One Hundred and One. So that's on the Wii U eShop now. Yep. Um. Galaga for NES was just uh, released on the Wii U Virtual Console. It was already on the Wii Virtual Console, so you know if you already have it, I guess you get it for another buck. But um, I got excited briefly when I thought it was the arcade game because they <laughs> referred to it as the arcade game Galaga, but it's the NES port wah, wah. of the arcade game Galaga. So yeah, I'll <clears> pass on that. Um, Splinter Cell Blacklist for Wii U just came out. Um, kind of really surprises me. Shop. Yeah, uh, Ubisoft seems to be kind of holding the line there. Yeah, quite a bit. I, I, I could have swore um, I, I would have bet money that they would have canceled this game at like the like the eleventh hour uh, mm -hmm. and said, "Yeah, you know what? Um, we're not bringing it out on the Wii U. Maybe if um, the sales uh, increase after that, uh, we, we'll do that." But uh, yeah. no, sure enough, it's it's out and um, there it is. People can play it if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And uh, Lloyd, I know you're excited about the upcoming release of Disney Infinity in a few days. I am. Well, I'm excited for the absolute joy that my kids have been um, exuding over the last week when I told mm -hmm. them that next Sunday Disney Infinity comes out. Every day it's like, 
oh dad it's only four more days to disney infinity or it's only five more days and <laughs> wow and then that's today, excitement yeah today my daughter's like dad it's three more days i'm like yeah i know so are we gonna go get it like right when we wake up I'm like no unfortunately stores don't open here until like 10 or noon depending on the store oh well, I guess we can have breakfast first then. I'm like, well, yeah, breakfast and some <laughs> other stuff. And then we have stuff to do on Sunday. So we can't just come home and play it. But yes, we will have it on Sunday. So yeah, my, my kids are super excited for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Foreman's excited about it too. And he just showed up in the chat room. So. Hey, Foreman. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I can't wait. Um, just looking at some of the stuff you can do. My, uh, my kids are super excited. I'm excited to play with them. And I just love the... Like I, I love Skylanders. I like playing the game. I loved watching my kids play battle mode, which they did for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, probably 30, 40 hours of battle mode. But um, Disney Infinity, to me, uh, it just makes more sense to what I want to get out of a game to play with the kids. Because instead of buying a new $60 um, game for every single Disney movie that comes out, I can now buy a 30, 25 or $30 um, playset or $35, I guess, playset, which basically gives you six to eight hours of content um, in, in a game that you already own and some cool toys that the kids can then put on their shelves or whatever. It, um, that makes sense. Uh, Foreman in the chat room said exactly what I was about to say. The $14 for a single figure is asinine. Uh, the good thing about this one is you don't really need uh, extra figures, really. You, get, you, you need the ones that come with the playset, uh, and that's about it. Um, because there's no additional content unlocked except for skins for the characters that you have as um, additional ones. So if you're still, say, playing the um, Incredibles playset and you just have Mr. Incredible because you have the base set, if you buy like Violet or, um, or Dash or any of the other characters, you don't really get anything out of that playset other than extra costumes for those two characters. Where in, um, in, Sky, in, in Skylanders, you basically needed... Eight, eight figures so you had to buy at least five more figures at 10 or 12 dollars a pop to unlock the whole game get all the achievements see all the content uh, in this game you don't really need to do that which is which is really cool so um, I'm gonna try to limit the kids to basically just getting the the play sets and I'll buy all the play sets I'll be happy about that that's no problem but really limit them on spending any allowance or birthday money on any single figures unless they're their most favorite figure in the entire world then maybe uh, because they don't really need it and doesn't really add anything to the game so um that that alone is the huge difference that really makes me excited for uh, disney infinity um to play with my kids um can't wait sunday's gonna be a big day <clears throat> very cool okay um Hope they enjoy it i kind of uh took that over i'm sorry i'm sorry steven i i put my nose into your little segment that you're you're working on <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> I had nothing to say about Disney Infinity, so you rescued that. Um, for 3DS, there's a few things that came out on the eShop. Um, you know, we uh, last week we talked about Mario and Luigi coming out, and uh, we also have a uh, Heavy Fire Black Arms 3D. Um, there's a 10 in one arcade collection, which is three dollars <laughs> on the nice. eShop. Nice. And so I'm sure that that's of impeccable quality. Um, <laughs> Ten games for three dollars. It can't wow. possibly I, go wrong. I think I have stuff like that on my iPhone, and it's always good. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And uh, the NES version of Donkey Kong Ugh. is on the 3DS Virtual Console now Ugh. too. Ugh. Again, another one where the arcade version would be awesome, but not the NES version. Ugh. Terrible. All right, uh, moving on, let's get into the news. Um, so to kick it off, let's kick it off with some good news because we've been whiny, complainy, old, cr crotchety old men uh, lately. Um, oh, and there's so much good news this week. Cur curmudgeonly, um, some might say. But uh, yeah, this week, um, Nintendo sent out a press release that the Nintendo 3DS is the best-selling video game platform for the third straight month, uh, which is pretty good um people said that remember when everyone was saying that the 3ds was doomed and it was dead yes uh, and they're saying the same thing about the wii u now so it is mm -hmm. possible for a co company to turn it around um with a combination of a good price and some great games so mm -hmm. maybe maybe nintendo will uh, do stuff like that so um yeah so it's it's really good um they're they announced some single game sales which are pretty interesting uh, animal crossing new leaf um, sold more than 150,000 digital and physical units in its second month on the market. So that's 660,000 uh, units overall, which is pretty huge. Um, for, yeah, that's very high for a handheld game. Yeah, and for Animal Crossing, which isn't a everybody um, 
like rushes out to pick up this game. It, it, there's certain people that are huge fans of the franchise and then trying to sell the franchise on someone that already isn't a fan is quite difficult as uh, I've had to do with a number of my friends at work. And they're just like, but I don't want to pick flowers and water them. I don't care about that stuff. It's like, sure, you don't have to do that. Uh, if you want to hear about my battle with uh, Animal Crossing, just listen to the bonus stage where I finally got uh, Jeff Ward convinced and he thinks it's one of the best games he's played in a long time, which is which is really good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and he, he's, he's hooked. He's Mr. Grumpy Cat himself. So if he likes mm-hmm. it, if Mikey likes it, and yeah, everyone will like it. Um, sure. All right. So uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon um, surpassed 820 combined uh, physical and digital units. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers U 830 lifetime sales. Um, Earthbound. Um, they don't give prices for it, so I'm not even going to say that. Um, they they basically said uh, it's off to a great start, and only two eShop titles, which is New Super Luigi U and Pikmin 3. Uh, generated more consumer spend in the same time frame since launch. So they sold lots, I guess. Wow, and Pikmin 3 at $60. Yeah, exactly. So you have to sell six copies of Earthbound to um, to basically make up for one copy of Pikmin, and it's making more money than Pikmin, uh, which just, to me, points that people aren't buying the digital version of Pikmin 3. But <laughs> but whatever. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's that's great. Uh, the 3DS is, is doing well, which is good stuff. Um, 3DS doing well means more money for Nintendo to um, basically throw into the big burning pyre that is the Wii U right now. <laughs> um, and hopefully they get to a point where that starts generating its own money. Um, but uh, at least they'll have a source of income right now to yes. uh, to throw into the money pit and uh, try to make stuff work there. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, moving on. Um, on Friday of last week, two days after the last Nintendo Direct, um, there was a wonderful 101 Direct which I didn't understand why it would exist. I, I thought it was stupid. And then I watched it and I basically had to smile for the whole thing because <laughs> he, he did his best. Oh, what's the director's name? I can't remember his name. Um, oh, of Wonderful 101? Yeah, Hideki Kamiya. That's right. Uh, he Hideki did his best Kamiya. Iwata impression doing the direct um, hand gesture, doing the deep he bow. Was he was in a suit. Um, it, he was, it was very cut and dry, um, mm-hmm. but it, it was totally on point to all the, all the stuff. Um, very well done direct. And uh, I really dug it. Um, that's some, some really cool things in the video showing off some of the gameplay of wonderful one one that I kind of knew about, but it was good to have this reminder, uh, all the different moves that you can do. Um, they uh, reminded us when it's coming out about 18, over and over t- 18 and over times, again, which was the, very funny. It, it was like watching an infomercial. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of laughed every single time. It was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if, if you haven't seen it already, uh, Nintendo has it up on their YouTube. Uh, go check it out because it's it's worth watching um, because it, it was really well done. It, you could definitely tell that it was it was done in the style and it was very tongue in cheek at the same time, which was yes. uh, which is really good. Yeah, he was saying on Twitter, people were asking him on Twitter, you know, whose idea was that? And he says that was Nintendo's idea. And everyone was like, that was amazing. He's like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So wow. he really enjoyed it. Um, and there's also just, an Iwata Asks interview with him. Cool. I didn't I didn't watch that one. Um, just to go back to, to the last thing you said, um, mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting because um, it was like two or three weeks ago that there was some sort of it was almost like complaining that Nintendo wasn't doing more to, more to promote this title. And then next thing you know, a couple weeks later, there's this direct and it seems like all any sort of bad blood is obviously um way gone and um and and they're they're all happy and it's a big lovey happy family right now yeah it's nice so, so um the uh the you ought to ask what is that all about i didn't uh i didn't watch that it. is a text interview on <clears throat> nintendo's website mm-hmm. um it, where iwata interviews hideki kamiya about his history how he got into developing uh games and stuff like that and his history at capcom and um it's like it's at least five pages long and it's really really fascinating and at one point he talks about when he was a little kid and the first time he was playing uh First time he was playing NES, I think it was. It was at a neighbor's house because you know he, his family didn't have one, and um, he would go over there and play games on their NES while the while his friend's older brother would bully him and like <laughs> beat him up and hit him and stuff like that. So the whole time he's over there, kind of I guess hunched over playing these games, and this older kid is beating him up, 
And I immediately <laughs> thought to myself, that explains a lot about the kinds of games that he develops. It, exactly. Because they're very punishing and challenging. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. I'm like, well, that really comes comes across in his game design. It does. <laughs> a lot of anger and physical physical blunt force trauma is coming across yeah. in each of the games that they uh, that they've released. Yeah. Yeah, and that's hilarious. Just so much of an insight into what it was like being, you know, he's <clears throat> someone around our age, you know, in uh, and, and growing up in Japan with the NES, well, with the Famicom and stuff like that, and, right. and just what that was like for him and all the different systems. And every time he mentions a game, there's like a little footnote and they describe the game and like what it, when it came out. And if it didn't originally come out on a Nintendo platform, it just says the year that it came out. They don't even mention the platform. Like for Okami, it was pretty funny. They're like, Okami was a game that came out in 2006. It was, it was published by Capcom. It came to the Wii in 2009. <laughs> like <laughs> they just they kind of ignore the other platforms that the stuff comes out on. That's very Nintendo. <clears throat> yeah, cool. I'll have to go check that out. I, I didn't even see that that came out. So I'll have to uh, Google it and, uh, and find the link to that one. Yeah, it's very cool. Awesome. Well, let's get into the rest of the show. Um, there was an interview done with uh, or done by uh, computersandvideogames.com. And they did an interview with um, with Satoru Iwata and basically asking about price cut and sales and issues and things like that. And um, the best um, quote out of that whole interview was picked up in a story that I read on Polygon. And um, Iwata basically said, if the price is actually an issue with the Wii U, then there is some contradiction between the current sales balance between the basic and premium versions of the Wii U. The basic basic version should have sold a lot, but the fact of the matter is that people are buying more of the premium versions, so the issue is not there. <laughs> I understand the real issue is the lack of software, and the only solution is to provide the mass market with a number of quality software titles. So um, Nintendo, their, their thought on the matter is just because um the premium version sold more than the 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 basic version that price isn't an issue it's like but you still only sold four million of them <laughs> so price <laughs> obviously is an issue and you're you sold the four million of those to the diehard nintendo fans that would buy a console on day one uh not the people that are just going to a store looking for uh, a replacement for their wii which they paid 179 for 199 or 249 um if you drop the price, I mean, you wouldn't have the issues that you're having right now. You'd have a lot more people that are casually interested in some of the games would just buy the console because it's not going to be $350 with a new generation of consoles coming out at around that same price. So I, I, I believe when he says that games are an issue because that's probably keeping a lot of people from buying it at 350 But if they dropped the price, a lot of those people would probably buy it for games like Pikmin or um, Lego City or... Um, New Super Mario Brothers U or whatever else um, is already out. There'd probably be enough for them there. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's a, a weak argument, uh, Mr. Iwata. But uh, thanks thanks for trying. Thanks for, for towing the company line that you set, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on. Uh, you had an interesting story about a, uh, a GameStop a scam that that the internet lit up about um which just seems really kind of bizarre yeah it's well what what's happened is um you know xenoblade chronicles which was developed by monolith soft who is a second party to nintendo mm -hmm. um that came out a few years ago in europe and they finally released it in the u.s last year and i guess they felt that the game wasn't going to sell too well but they still wanted to put it out so there were two ways you could buy it you could buy it from nintendo's <coughs> website or you could buy it from uh, GameStop. Um, so the only way to get it without having to pay shipping for it, um, and Nintendo's shipping is exorbitant from the website, <laughs> um, compared to places like Amazon at least, right. uh, is to go to GameStop. And that's how I got my copy. I pre-ordered it and I got it at uh, GameStop. And now the game reviewed very well. It's a really good game, very, uh, very cool. Um, but they only did the one run of it and it sold out and then prices started to go up on mm -hmm. copies of the game. So it's become scant. People are regularly play, paying more than $100 for used copies of this game on eBay and on Craigslist and other places like that. Um, uh, Quacko says that he sold his copy of Xenoblade Chronicles this week. I don't know how much he made on it. He says he made a profit, but I don't know how much uh, Quacko will tell us how much he 
how much money he got for that. But um, hmm. so GameStop, uh, seeing this, apparently has somehow sourced the word uh, sold for eighty five. Somehow sourced um, more copies of Xenoblade Chronicles, and they're only listed as used. Um, but they are apparently in like new condition. So what people figure GameStop did was ordered another run of the games, cut them all open, and is now selling them for eighty nine ninety nine right. on their website and in their stores. Now, people somehow have decided that this is something for them to get very angry about. Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, they're gaming the system. They're gaming the supply and demand. Um, yeah. The thing is, supply and demand works both ways. You can you can buy something at a lower price and sell for the high price. But if you sell enough at the high price, eventually the, the prices are going to balance out. Um, mm-hmm. So if they didn't in, indeed order another run, which obviously wasn't cheap to fire up the presses and get the gold masters out of storage and, and start burning the DVDs and getting all that stuff done. If they did fund that, um, they can sell it however the hell they want. Um, because yeah. they're, they're the ones that, that fronted, um, all the costs for that. I don't see a big problem with it. I mean, if you wanted the game, it cost you eighty nine ninety five yesterday and it's going to cost you eighty nine ninety five tomorrow. Um, if more sell, it'll probably be maybe a little bit cheaper if they did indeed order 10,000 copies or whatever the print run it was that they did. Mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't see the anger about it, but people, GameStop can, someone in GameStop could sneeze and there'd be an article on like NeoGAF or, or Polygon or some other website um, about how GameStop is around to spread the plague. <laughs> like, yeah. And, you know, GameStop does plenty <clears throat> for us to be unhappy about. For sure. But it makes me a lot angrier when they sell games that they've opened as new than selling new games they've manufactured that don't have shrink wrap on them, selling them as used. Yep. Uh, I mean, they're, they're basically selling them as being lower quality than they actually are. Mm-hmm. It seems like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And they're selling it for less. They're selling it for less than everybody else is, which is pulling the price of it down. Mm-hmm. And they're a, they're a company. They're there to make money. I, <clears throat> I just I don't understand why this is something that people have decided to get so angry about. And they're also a company in a market that is rapidly shrinking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like the as the years go on, the amount of people buying physical discs and the amount of people buying digital releases, um, they're like this now and they're eventually going to meet up somewhere in the middle and then probably inch forward the other way. So there'll be less people in GameStops across the country, countries um, buying a new um like physical releases and there'll be more people buying digital and not ever visiting GameStop. So it makes sense. They, they fronted something. Um, they got it manufactured. If this is indeed true, um, they fronted the money, got it manufactured and are reaping the benefits from doing that. And I'm sure that, um, I'm sure that if, if it works, we'll see other reprints done that way and yeah. handled that way. I mean, it, it yeah, makes they sense. actually said they're going to do another one. Um, it's coming soon. They're going to have new copies of, uh, more copies of Metroid prime trilogy. So I guess that was something that they perfect have the ability to order another run of as well. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Nintendo likes to make money as well. So mm-hmm. they'll happily sell, um, bulk copies of games and, and fire up the presses if there's a buyer for it. So it yeah. makes sense all around. Um, but yeah, people, people need more excuses to get angry, I guess is, uh, what, what the thing is. Sure. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on. Um, this is something that Stephen and I have been messing around with uh, this week. And this is something that uh, someone um, basically posted up on uh, GBATemp.net. Um, it was on Reddit. Um, it was on a bunch of different websites. And it was a how to um, how to have a homemade Street Pass relay. Um, because with Nintendo... Um, basically firing up the street pass relay stations at the different uh, Nintendo zone um, locations around um, the U S and Canada and other places in the world where uh, you could go to McDonald's with your 3ds and you would grab the, the me and the street pass tag of the last person that was there that had a 3ds and you would leave yours for the next person. So you didn't have to be there uh, because we're not Japan where you ride a train and you get 50 street passes because everybody has one of these um, devices. Um, I know people that have a 3ds that have never gotten a street pass ever because they live in a smaller city in the middle of nowhere that 
basically doesn't have a, a, a large city center that they can go to and get these uh, street passes. So this is a nice little workaround that Nintendo did. But what um, what they've figured out a way is that if you um, use the Wi-Fi hotspot name of ATT Wi-Fi, you trick your Nintendo DS into thinking that it's at a Nintendo zone. And then you tri- you change the MAC address of your wireless network to match uh, a MAC address that is known. So either a, a, a Nintendo um, Direct or Nintendo Zone box somewhere in the world. If you know the MAC address for that, you could do that. Or what they've done here is they've created their own little range of MAC addresses so that we're not attacking the systems that already exist you're just basically street passing with people that are also using this system. So they they picked the MAC address and um, you could do it manually. You could do it on your Windows box, on Linux. Uh, people have specific types of routers that can run uh, custom firmware. Like if you have a, a, DD, um, a DDWRT Linksys router, you could do that yourself. Um, for me, I run Mac, so it's easy for me to share my internet connection over Wi-Fi and change the MAC address is super simple to do. You can you can you can um, basically clone a MAC address and know in, in one little command on the Mac and do it that way. So set it up and tried it, and it worked. The first time I tried it, um, I left my DS on for about two three minutes, and then finally I saw this little uh, little green blinking light, and it's like, oh okay, there's the stuff. That that's that's my little my little taste. Um, and I was <laughs> and I was hooked immediately hooked. Um, so I worked on a script to basically auto cycle this stuff and turn on my Wi-Fi and stuff and it wasn't working and I was getting really frustrated and then someone else already did the work the hard work so there's a script that you can download if you're a Mac user you basically give it some information about your system you give it a file of Mac addresses and then it just cycles it every five minutes um, so every morning for the last couple of days I've left it on for an hour or so and I've gotten 10 street pass hits so I get 10 new puzzle pieces I get um, I like I have all new houses inside of Animal Crossing because it's it's overwritten all the other street, local street pass tags that I've done in the uh, what is that called I can't remember the um, the showroom street pass showcase street pass sh- yeah, street pass showcase that's right so it's all new people all people that I don't know and I haven't even checked them out yet because they just keep re- resetting so quickly but um, but yeah, it's it's really awesome. It's a really great way to game the system. And if Nintendo created this as a way for people to get more street pass tags, well, it would behoove them to keep this open so that people can still do it <laughs> and get more street pass tags. Nintendo being Nintendo, I'm sure they're going to find some way to close this loophole. They'll have a file that is somewhere in a firmware update that has known MAC addresses that you can talk to. Um, they'll have some thing in the background on their server because what how this system obviously works or or how i would set it up if i was developing a system is your system hits the hits the wi-fi hotspot figures out what the mac address is sends a ping to nintendo servers that says on this date at this mac address i hit this um this wi-fi hotspot here's my street pass bundle and then just shoot it up to their servers so if there's a lot of people doing this, potentially Nintendo servers could get really overloaded and they would just shut the whole thing down. Hopefully people aren't going to be stupid. People online are usually pretty stupid, so I could see <laughs> I could see the abuse happening. But hopefully yeah. they find a and way to showing, balance it out. It's showing, I think, in the <clears> amount <throat> of tags that we're getting, it's dramatically decreasing. It it definitely is, yeah. Definitely. Um, but uh, but yeah, really interesting. Uh, if nothing else, it was a fun thing to hack away at for the for the last few days and, and fool around with. It was it was cool doing like little um, like shell scripting. Um, I haven't done that forever. So it was cool writing little bash scripts to figure all this stuff out. And and then someone did the hard work for me and it was like, as fun as this is. I could just run this script <laughs> and that's what I did from, <laughs> from then on out. But I'm going to update it to make it do some randomization and stuff just because that's fun for some strange reason. So I will probably do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great little workaround. I'll post a link. Um, who knows if this is even going to be working by the time you get this podcast, as Steven said, I've been getting, like I left it running. Um, it ran through 25 Mac addresses every five minutes or 25 
refreshing every five minutes. I only got three street pass hits. So the yeah. system is definitely taxed right now. So I think I'm going to stop using it for, for the next week or so. Um, see if it gets a little bit more stable and uh, figure out if it's even something usable after that. But uh, it was fun. I, I tagged people all over the world. Um, oh, I, had yeah. a, I had a whole bunch of invading armies in the street pass games that I beat. Um, then I've had some people come that have like um, they have a uh, what is it a force of like three million plus people wow. um and it's just like okay i'll never beat that guy um but yeah it was just fun to check out some other content that i would never had had any other reason or been able to do because i've street passed a lot of people like 250 so uh, or so people locally and it's all been locals i've never street passed someone from out of the province and now i have people from the states and and the uk and and a lot of people in japan and I've actually street passed the same guy in Halifax um, four times. So we happen to be running our scripts at the exact same time that I've actually street passed the same guy randomly four times, which was wow, that's that's cool, <laughs> which was kind of fun. So yeah, so yeah, check it out. Uh, street, street pass or what people are calling home pass. Um, I'll post a link in the show notes, but your mileage may vary. And if Nintendo's really mean about this, they could actually ban your um, unit from ever doing a street pass through um, the Nintendo zone. So don't uh, don't run it because we said so, because we're not telling you to do it, um, because it could actually um, result in something, a ban happening. I don't think Nintendo would do that. They yeah, probably so either. they close the loophole, uh, but they're also the company that limits demos to a number of runs. So they can be evil. <laughs> so <laughs> so if they this would be the evil thing for them to do would just be to ban all the MAC addresses of all your DSs from hitting it. And then you would be you would be pooch. You'd have to get another 3DS to basically be able to do this again. So. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, check it out. Home Pass. I'll post a link in the show notes. All right, Stephen. Um, you could be the um, the eagle eye legal reporter um, for the for the show. Why don't you tell us about some some patent judgments and stuff? Because this is like super dry and boring to me. Okay, well I'll make it pretty quick. Um, there was a a guy who uh, brought a case against Nintendo, claiming that their 3DS 3D technology violates his patent for um, 3D without glasses. Uh, he won the patent suit and won a $30.2 million judgment against Nintendo. Nintendo appealed it and the new judge looked at all the information, said there's no real evidence that the patent was ever actually violated and cut the, the award in half to $15.1 million and told the guy filing the suit, you either accept this half at $15.1 million or take this back to trial, and if you do, you will almost certainly lose it because the evidence here is not clear that this patent was violated. <laughs> and Nintendo's position on it is, we are absolutely going back to trial because we want this to be zero because there's no real evidence that this patent was violated. Right. So oh. that's the state of this right now. Oh, so, so crazy. Um, the one thing that I... I, I I hate patent law. I hate hearing about it. There's certain <laughs> podcasts that I stop listening to now because all they talk about is patents. Um, and the thing I don't understand is Nintendo bought the screens from another company. So mm. another company created the technology that Nintendo is using. Yet Nintendo is liable for the patent infringement, even though they bought the hardware from like Fuji um, because this technology is in display in a lot of their cameras like Fujifilm and it's like how like that doesn't make sense to me it's like all the Apple patents and all the Samsung patent patent suits it's like you're buying these components from other companies like why is the company that puts it all like puts the Lego pieces together is the one that's on the line so this whole um, attack on Nintendo just really didn't make sense to me it's like well yeah th they bought the tech from someone else they didn't engineer it and and make this new way of doing it themselves they bought it from someone else sure uh, just drives me absolutely insane like I just wish there was no patent law, um, like lawsuits and that everything was just like all done fairly and reasonably, um, like a Fran patent system across every single patent to yeah. force people to license things at, at a, at an affordable rate, um, so that you can't just come up with the idea and patent it and never actually produce the thing that you had the idea of, but yet collect money from other companies. It's just, Oh, all that sure. stuff makes me angry, but I'm Canadian. So yeah, me well, socialist. I mean, there's some, there's some, um, <laughs> Uh, proposed uh, 
uh, legislation here that would change patent law to make it so <laughs> that if you are going to bring a patent law case against one of these companies, um, you actually have something uh, on the line to lose. Because what's happening is you have these companies that buy up a whole bunch of patents and then cleverly twist the wording on, uh, you know, they have lawyers, they hire a bunch of lawyers and then the lawyers twist the wording on it to make it sound like these other companies have violated the patents. And then they sue those companies and they hope that those companies will settle. <clears throat> right. So they get free money for nothing. Um, and if that company is too small to settle or to defend themselves, that company goes out of business. So this is like, you know, hindering development of, of technology. Right. So the, the, the proposed legislation would actually give them something to lose so that if they do bring one of these suits and they lose, they will have to pay all the legal costs for the company that they were suing, hmm. which is not the case now. Right now they have zero to lose by suing. You know, only the money that they put into the suit itself. So, you know, it's it really would make it a much more uh, a much more dangerous thing to fake these uh, patents. Wow. Yeah i i hope I hope stuff anything to get this out of the news because I I'm just sick of hearing it every single time yeah, I look at a, I look at Gizmodo or whatever and it's just like Apple sues this person. Every other company is now suing Apple. Um, they're suing each other while suing Apple, while suing themselves for some strange reason. One yep. one division of a company is suing another division of the same company. It's just all this stuff is just absolutely insane. So, yeah. All right, moving on. Um, this one's interesting. Um, there's a website, uh, HackYourConsole.com, uh, that sells mod chips and other piracy um, stuff that's used for piracy. So things that you use to play pirated games. Um, there's a lot of websites that sell this type of stuff, and there's there's some legal gray area in a lot of different parts of the world. So that's why they're still around. Um, but apparently, this company. <clears throat> was selling the new um, Nintendo DS uh, mod chip, um, not not a mod chip, a uh, flash card, which basically allows you to play 3DS games. Um, that's all it allows you to do is to play ROMs. So it's not even, a lot of people explain this stuff away that I'm just using it to develop my own software, which I understand. I like to tinker and code, so I get that. And I've written software for a DS before, and I've written software for other consoles that allowed me to run code. And, and Sure, um, I get that. But the bulk of these people are buying it because they want to play copy games. So this new card came out. I'm not even going to mention it here because I don't want to give them the time of day. Um, and this website was taking pre-orders for it. And it was one of their main um, resellers, I guess. Um, but even worse, what this com um, what this uh, website was doing was allowing you to buy a pre-modded Wii system that came with a hard drive of Wii games on it. <laughs> so <laughs> 200 games for like $50 on a hard drive um, with all the most popular games um, sure. and, and a lot of stuff like that. So Nintendo basically said, um, you know what? You're a pirate and we're suing you. So they, um, they filed for um, a lawsuit and lo and behold, a few days later, if you go to hackyourconsole.com, you get a, a out of service. This site is out of service. At this time, all pre-orders have been canceled. No new orders will be accepted. So it looks like Nintendo won over um, some of the evil doers and actually managed to destroy this website, which is good. If you're if you're basically only selling pirated software, you deserve to be out of business. Yeah. Um, and this is a, a really good thing. So um, that's chalk one up. Um, to, to Nintendo for uh, for actually winning on this one. Um, the problem is there's probably a thousand other websites that are doing the exact same thing. So it's going to be yeah. a um, it's going to be a long drawn out um, battle to get this new 3ds mod chip um, or um, not a mod chip uh, a copying game copying device um, out of market. And the weird thing about this is apparently it requires you to be on like a firmware that's like a year old to be able to use it. So like the amount of people that could even buy this device and use it are so slim. Um, but yet where there's a will, there's a way if people want to copy software. They're going to find some way to do it. And sure yeah. enough, um, this, um, uh, a company is actually making a device to do it. So, um, I'm not going to link to that. Um, but uh, if you want to Google it, I guess you could find it. But, um, just so you know, um, if a company goes out of business like this, I'm sure they kept your money and you're not going to get the device. And, um, you can just, call that karma i guess is what you can yeah. call that <laughs> all right moving on uh, a couple quick ones um nintendo um 
over at the New Super Mario Brothers 2 website. So New Super Mario Brothers 2.nintendo.com. They have this little ticker about the number of coins um, that have been gotten in the game. Because the whole game is about collecting coins, which is the reason why I didn't like the game. Because it was not a, a true Mario game. It was basically just collect a coin collect-a-thon. And it was fun, but I didn't think it deserved a full price. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, but the ticker has actually flipped over to a trillion So people have collected across all the copies of New Super Mario Brothers 2 over a trillion coins. Um, I probably I I probably collected 20,000. So some of that is my coins. But um, for for people to collect a trillion, that is a lot of people playing this game. (laughs) That is a lot of people fighting to get two million coins. So your background changes (laughs) because that's the thing (laughs) that people like for some reason. Um, yeah, trillion coins, man. That's that's a lot of coins, and it keeps updating. If you keep the website open, you, you can see like almost real time as people are are I guess posting up to uh, the internet um, what they've done, and it just keeps flipping over. And uh, that's a lot of coins, my friends. It certainly seems that way. I just I I hate that. <laughs> I hate that part of the game. That's why I didn't like the game. But it's I didn't buy it. <laughs> it just sounded so unappealing. It's interesting though. Uh, interesting mm-hmm. though to see uh, a trillion coins have been collected that's a that's a lot of uh, imagine if you got royalty for the little ding sound um you would be rolling in it right now <laughs> i guess you every time yeah. every time the, the nintendo coin ding goes off you you get a, a fraction of a fraction of a penny you'd be yeah. rich man you'd be sure. totally totally rich um but of course nintendo would never do that yeah they would change the sound <laughs> they would <laughs> exactly i know i would in their yeah. position big time so <laughs> all right moving on uh last now it goes moo when you get a coin <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it goes to chunk instead of da ding um yep. it just uh or makes a uh, cash register sound and then the cash register company would sue nintendo because you used our sound and uh we'd <laughs> have more patented. we'd have more patent law to talk about on the show it'd be it'd be great oh, love that <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to mention this one because I had a lot of fun with this game on iOS. Um, it's called <laughs> Momonga Pinball Adventures, um, and it's going to be coming uh, to the Wii U um, by Paladin Studios, the the maker of the game. So um, basically, this game was you're a flying squirrel um, that basically rolls up into a ball and you play pinball with this flying squirrel trying to find things in the level and complete the level before you go to the next level um so it was kind of like a mixture between an adventure game and a pinball game loved it on um on my on my ipad i played the hell out of it um but it was like five bucks on um the ipad i wonder what the eShop price is going to be for this um hopefully they put a lot more um development into it but it just shows that people um are porting stuff over to the Wii U. So it's not a it's not a dead platform. There's a lot of independent developers that are really trying to support the the eShop. Nintendo's made it really attractive finally for them to jump on and and make games for the Wii U. So um yeah, this this is good news. Um for this game uh because I all like it and I know my kids will play it. Um but there's so many other uh independent games that I'm I'm hearing on Twitter. Like it's almost every day when I get a a tweet from someone that's a new game announced for the Wii U uh, coming in 2014 blah 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 and it's just like wow that that's awesome because when you when you see that there's only four million consoles on the market kind of makes companies not want to spend a hundred million dollars making a game for the console but an independent developer can spend an extra twenty thousand dollars um getting a game that already exists ported over and uh, potentially make their money back which is a, a really good thing so yep um i'm sure we'll report on more um independent stuff in the future because that's probably going to be where the news is um, until Nintendo gets their sales out of the slump, Stephen. I think. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of... Uh, I've heard a lot of talk lately that the the innovation these days in games, the, the really clever, interesting new ideas, it's all coming out of these little games that totally. are made by the small studios because yep. they can afford to take a chance on a new mechanic. Yeah, and, and they're not basically spending millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars paying people to create even better looking 3d stuff Mm -hmm. they have themselves and maybe a couple other people or they contract stuff out um the art doesn't look the best in the world but it has a style and the whole game looks like that um Mm -hmm. if you look at like fez um, not that that's a small independent title but you, you look at like an art style that isn't it's not the best looking game ever but it looks great for what it is. Like it's retro, it's 8-bit, it makes sense in, in the world of the game. You look at um, 
Bastion is a good example. Exactly. Um, a lot of games like that are coming out now where it's just it's going back to kind of like the 16-bit uh, Super Nintendo era where you get these like lush hand-painted um, worlds that people are going on because I guess it's easy to get people that um, can make um, stuff with paint uh, because you don't need to learn how to model things in 3d and apply meshes yeah. and all the different 3d programs um so a lot of a lot of people are doing that quacko in the chat room says squids is coming yeah we, we talked <laughs> about that one a few times but uh yeah it's super exciting um i can't wait to pick up all these independent titles on my um on my wii u and play them um on my gamepad and just have fun with it um because a lot of them are really worth playing on the big screen as well so uh, check it out. We'll uh, talk more about this, I'm sure, as the months roll on. All right, Stephen. It's going to about do it. This was a long show. It was. I'll put some music I'm Trying on. to figure out where we ran so long. We t- talked about a lot of games this week, I guess. Yeah. Which is good. Which is good. Which is good. Oh, we had our Pikmin 3 review and DuckTales remastered review. I think those padded it out quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Um, we want to hear from you. Head on over to VGPodcasts.com and let us know what you think. Email us directly at VGPodcasts at gmail.com. People keep saying I say this way too fast. So if they listen to their podcast on double speed, they can't understand what I'm saying. So I'm making a concerted effort to slow down, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> VGPodcasts at gmail.com. Or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 VG Podcasts. Uh, we love hearing from you guys. You can be like Reggie from Nintendo and send us an email and we'll read it out on a future episode of the Nintendo Pulse Podcast. So, Stephen, thanks again for joining me. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun this week. Guys, have fun. Go play your Pikmins and we'll talk to you in a week's time. Later. <laughs>